I think that so many people are so disconnected from themselves. They're operating on autopilot. They're reacting to their environment that even when given the opportunity to set a goal for themselves, they generally don't set the right goal right. because they don't know what the fuck they're doing because they don't even know who they are fundamentally. That's the big thing, man. And that's why it was important for me to finally realize, stop being all these fake people I used to be. Stop being afraid. There was no growth until I cut myself down to nothing, to the person I really was, the real human being. And once I found out who I really was, that's when I started growing. I was trying to build on top of a lied, fucked up foundation. You can't build a house on a fucked up foundation. So I had, to, I had to get down to the actual mineral soil of who I was. And that's when you can start real growth. And what is the role that suffering plays in that? Or the willingness to suffer? It starts to peel all those layers away. All those artificial layers away. If you're willing to suffer and suffer and go back in the grind, that internal dialogue you have with yourself when you're in misery and you're uncomfortable, it's a real scary unfiltered, no lying dialogue between you and yourself. And people know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about when you're in a bad spot in life and your mind is saying all kinds of shit. That's who you really are. That's the real you. No Rocky Balboa moments going on up there. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. you know, it's round 14. Let's come on, we got this. No, it's like, fuck this, I'm out of here, man. This is crazy. That's where the growth happens. When you're able to stay in that moment, and talk to yourself, talk yourself back into the suck of wherever you're going through. And you start stripping those layers away. But as you're stripping those layers away, you're building calluses over top of shit in your mind. That's where the growth starts to happen is when you have to force yourself to stay in it. You can't, you can't leave it. Three days later, I'm in a hundred mile race, no train at all. And when you do that, it is stupid. But when it does, if you're not going to quit it, like you just talked about, it breaks you down to nothing. You are suffering so badly mentally and physically that all of these demons are coming up. You, and you're trying to find answers and you're trying to find answers. It, it was like living 19 hours. It's like five years I put into 19 hours of highs and lows and pitfalls and, 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 and seeing the sun come up. And it was like, my God, I lived five years in 19 hours. It was unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So do you find yourself chasing that now with every ultra challenge? No, because once you realize what you get from ultra, what you get from life, I can apply that now just by sitting here with you. You know, those tools now, I don't need to go out, even though I still do it, and go out and hammer. The hammering part is like, you know, it's like a, uh, a purging of the soul. You go out there and hammer out there. Yeah. You got to do that every once in a while. You got to hammer, man. You got you to get after it. But now I figured out so many different ways and so many different tools through all of the journeys I've been through, through just growing up, man, just, just, just being mature, you know, just, just being really mature and not holding on to hate, you know, really, really just letting all that shit go, man. And, and starting from scratch and, and let's go, let's go forward. How do you let it go? I don't think enough about people that have, that, that have wronged me. Or situations that have wronged me, because once you've uh, once you've uh, come to a place where you are really happy with who you are in life, no one fucks with you anymore. Even though they're fucking with you, it doesn't fuck with it you. It doesn't fuck with you. You know, like all these. I used to be so hurt by everything in the military, and if someone did something or said something, like man, I have overcome so much shit. There's not like I. I I'm just in a really good headspace right now. My headspace, I own it. A lot of people own other people's headspace. I own my own shit now. What do you mean own other? Like they're just all caught up in what other people think about them and running all these narratives in their That's mind. That's right. About
different. They're more caught up in what other people think about them than how you feel about your own personal self. So a lot of people have their brain and their mind on rent to a whole bunch of motherfuckers in the world. I am paying rent on my own shit. I finally put a down payment on it and I'm making payments every daggone day on my own fucking brain.